If you're using 802.11, let's say B or G, you are probably very familiar with the 2.4 gigahertz range. This is even use, usable in backwards compatibility with 802.11n. So what do we see going on at 2.4 gigahertz? Remember, this was uh, defined by the ITU as an ISM band, right? The Industrial Scientific and Medical Band. And so it's adopted worldwide. This is a frequency that's kind of available. It's a kind of open range. When we say 2.4 gigahertz, remember, we don't mean exactly 2.4 gigahertz. We mean around there with a set of 14 channels that can be dug out of the overall range. So this is the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth, but really it stretches from 2.412 all the way to 2.484. And so we're using chunks of that for a particular access points uh, service area. All right, so a service area is going to be configured, a service set is going to be configured, and it's going to be, okay, here's a Japanese one. It can, they can use uh, channel 14, unlike the rest of the world. So they're going to use that particular item. So they're going to say, I'm using channel 14, which means they're using a 22 megahertz, every one of these channels is 22 megahertz range in order to communicate. Why 22 megahertz? Well, remember the baseline of how DSSS communicates is based upon that 22 megahertz channel uh, that is defined by 11 individual uh, sub-channels, if you will, that are two megahertz wide, right? Remember that Barker code, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 1. We, we need to convey that information. So every one of those bits is two megahertz wide. So we end up dividing this channel up into 11 subsections. There's 11. Every one of those subsections, subchannels is essentially sending out one bit. If necessary, we can use all 11 of those to convey the number one. Right? Remember, that's our Barker chipping code, most baseline, slowest form of communication. Everything else is a more effective way to use those, uh, those, those uh, individual subchannels, but that's what it's all based on as the lowest common denominator. Now, here's the thing about channels, gang. Notice they overlap. The center point of the channel is unique, but the 22 megahertz umbrella of that channel is not distinct. In fact, as we look at adjacent channels, we see there's a ton of overlap between let's say channel one and channel two, right? Here's channel one moving from here to here. Here's channel two. Man, there's only a little bit of it that is distinct. Notice only this much of channel two is actually distinct from channel one. That's a lot of overlap. It's a lot of potential for conflicting RF signals, noise that an access point has to filter out. Lots of ones and zeros getting corrupted because if you're on your access point and I'm on mine, we don't coordinate with each other if we're not uh, we don't coordinate with each other as we're independent uh, devices. So we're going to see each other's traffic as noise and essentially have to compensate for it just as if it was a microwave uh, oven that was popping some popcorn. It's noise that has to be countered for. So what is the best practice? The best practice, gang, is going to be to use channels 1, 6, and 11. 1, 6, and 11, as you can see, are distinct channels that have no overlap with them. So when I'm in an access point and I get asked, channel, and it's got a little drop-down menu listing out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? List all in those out. These are the numbers that I'm going to want to select most of the time. Now, why are they all available? Because they're all possible. And for example, if I've got three access points using one and three access points using six, well, maybe in that specific configuration, I might want to choose channel three or four, where at least I've got something that is some free air space, right? Some free channel space that isn't being occupied by something else. But the majority of the time, this is what I'm going to want to use. Uh, definitely remember, only channels uh, 1 through 11 are available according to the FCC in the United States. Uh, remember that channel 14 is available if you're in Japan. Uh, up through channel 13 is available in Europe. And again, 22 megahertz wide bands that overlap with each other. That's the way the 2.4 gigahertz range works.